Hey, Pastor Dan Coverstone, it is uh, Tuesday, September 8th. Last night on uh, Monday the 7th of September, I had a dream that has probably troubled me more than any of the dreams that I've had. Um, I'm an American. I love this country. I've traveled to 43 countries, and uh, we have a heritage. We have a a country that stood as a beacon of hope and light, even financial support for a lot of the nations. Um, but this one got me last night. Saw a Statue of Liberty proudly standing in that harbor outside of New York, lighting the nations in freedom. I saw the sky suddenly darkened. Strong waves began to crash against the shore with a very, very fierce intensity, almost hurricane, tsunami-like force, uh, tropical storm-type force. And there were boats, and they had men in them, and they were out in the storm trying to breach the island on which she stood. They were fighting the waves as well, but they were actually kind of working with the waves. And uh, they were trying to get the lady, but the storm was so severe they could not, even though the storm and them seemed to be looking into, you know, the, working together, so to speak. I saw the torch in her hand, it was flashing, being struck by lightning, pieces of rock and debris were being thrown at her with brute force. And she was, even though she had her torch, she was an immovable statue. I, I saw her watching and looking around about her to kind of see where the, where the attacks were coming from. So she knew they were there, but she would not move. Feet were stuck on that pedestal. The rocks and the stuff, the debris that was being thrown at her, had caused some gashes, had caused some cuts on her neck, round about her heart. I could see there was blood coming out. Like she not necessarily had been shot, but something had, had tried, like the, the, the debris in the rock had either pierced her or had left a jagged edge and, and cut something. I saw that three of the spines on the, th the crown on her head, I don't think necessarily it's a crown, but it had some spines that were pointing out, three of them. Three of those spines on her crown had been broken off and was leaving a very, very jagged edge. And the right torch hand kept dropping to secure the, 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 the tablet with the Declaration of Independence July 4th of that year that had been pinned on it. She, she, she would drop her hand and kind of do this to keep, to keep the book in, her pla in its place. She was struggling to keep her footing almost slipping off the pedestal, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't move. She would not move. And also there was this huge volley of trash and debris, just junk, hit her directly in the face, and she stepped back off the pedestal and she fell because the force of this hit her right in the face. She still held on to the torch, and she still held on to the declaration, uh, you know, uh, dateline on her on the on the on the book but that light that that torch just kept flickering like a light about to go out the declaration that was in her left hand or left arm it was cracked and there were large chips and pieces falling off of it I, I kept seeing liberty trying to reach out with her hand while she holds it and grabbing the pieces but they wouldn't stick she was crying. Liberty was crying. She was weeping. She was She was fighting to keep her dignity. She was trying to you know to get the pieces of what she had held on to, but you was it was obvious she knew that she was in a battle that was fighting her and defeating her. And she was desperate trying to hold on. You could see the fierceness in her face. She was trying to what fight and win. Was it coming through? And then the boats appeared with the men, and they threw ropes around her arms and her legs and kept trying to bring her to the ground. And they pulled and, and pulled in tandem, and finally she fell to her knees. It was almost like Gulliver's Travels when the giant gets, gets knocked over. They were throwing herself around, but she was still got the light. She still has the, the horse in her, in her fists, her right hand, and she's trying to hold that book, what's left of it, in, in her left, left hand. They were hammering away with like pry tools at the Declaration, trying to get the days off. So July 4th, 
and they're trying to pry those those numbers and those letters off. And they were using cutting tools to remove the torch. They kept trying to, to, to just rip it, jerk it out of her hand, and she just kept holding on and holding on and holding on. And because she fought them so hard, they finally just began to cut off her hand. They tied her other hand behind her back. And the men began rolling her in ropes, and she was yelling for help. She was crying out. It wasn't a desperate cry. It was, it, was, it was a cry for those who were listening to come to her defense. All those nations that, that she had helped for so many years and nobody would come. And they took a, a large banner of fabric. It was black and smoky gray, kind of all together. Black and smoky gray banner of fabric. And they covered her face with it. They just kept wrapping and wrapping, almost like a mummy would think. They just kept wrapping and wrapping and wrapping until she, you couldn't, you could barely see her eyes and the jagged spines of, of some of the crime, of the, the crown. Then they took an anchor chain and they wrapped it around her, nest, her neck and they asked her if she had any last words. Her eyes weren't fearful. They were feisty. They were fitful. There was this angry resolve in her face that she said nothing. That chain was tied to a boat and the boat began to drag her off of Liberty Island and out into the harbor. When they got out of the sea, the boat began to pull very quickly. Her arms were down to her side, her legs were tied, and she was just kind of rolling, spinning as the boat pulled. The boat kept going faster and faster. It was almost like a ski boat was pulling her. She kept twisting back and forth, but she was being pulled by the, by the boat and eventually lost all the strength that she had. The banner had come off of her mouth, but she wasn't saying anything. When the boat slowed, and then the boat kind of looked back to see how where she was, and they reversed the boat. They reversed the boat and went backwards and ran over her. See that body bouncing and bleeding in the harbor. She took a breath and she went under. She came back up a minute later and then she did the same thing again. And when she came up the next time, the boat accelerated forward. Hit her square on the face. And she went down. boat began to circle the area after it hit her. But she never came back up. She never came back up. At least alive. She floated back up the back. Her back was to the top. Torch hand was gone. The other arm was tied behind her back. There was this thunderous clap. Brilliant lightning strike. And the storm just raged all around the harbor. And I saw the men on that boat. Just a loose group of men. Someone was throwing them pieces of silver. Not in a bag, just loose pieces of silver were being thrown at the men. And they began to pick them up, kind of fight, almost fighting over them feverishly. Picked them up. Gripped them with her fist, put them in her pockets, sat down in the seat, drove away. Almost like, okay, our job here is done.
This one got me. The others, the dreams always get me, but this one got me because this is America's land I love. I know what the Statue of Liberty stands for. But, uh, I love our country. Travel enough to know that we've got it. We got a lot of good here. I know what most Americans think about this country, I, but I also know that a lot of people they hate it, and don't even really know why they hate it. And that's I'm talking about the protests and and the defund the police groups and any movement that wants to shred the Constitution. And I. I may get a little political here, and I don't care. I, what I saw, what I saw, has impacted me last night. I lost a lot of sleep last night. I woke up about two fifteen. I've been able to get to sleep ever since. The dream going through my mind very, very much. Believers, we need to pray for our country. We know eventually it can't last forever. I know that. You know that. We all know that. My hope, my, my prayer was that this nation would last long after me so that my kids and my grandkids would understand how much this country has done for people, its people, and for the nations and for those that come. But I ask you to pray for America. I ask you to pray for elected officials. Silver at the end of the dream tells me something. Somebody is paying to see her go down. I do believe there's a deep state. I do believe there's a lot of chaos in our world. A lot of chaos in our country. I believe there's, there are people in high elected office who, who want to see this, this country burn. I don't. I want fire, but I want cause fire revival to hit. I know what the dream means. I think you all know what the dream means. Our country, our freedoms are under attack. And we, we have a responsibility to occupy until he comes. To seek his face, to pray, and to trust. So pray for America. Not because I had a dream. Because this used to be his country. It used to be the one nation under God. And now there's a large group of people fighting the very God whose nation it used to be under. Or who, who the God it used to be under. You know what I'm saying. This one got me. Still get me now. Pray for America. Pray for revival. If nothing else, I want to see her go down fighting. And I'll go down fighting with it and for it. Join me.